guys, welcome back to the study tube project. You are back with me, Holly, and we're talking about something that is again kind of similar to my last video about the immune system. This topic about viruses is uh, very appropriate for the now, you know. I thought I would structure it by giving you 10 semi quick fire facts about viruses that hopefully you can understand, take away, and share with your friends, your family and yeah just feel a bit more clued up about viruses because you know there's no better time to feel clued up about viruses okay so i just had to stop filming and restart filming because my other memory card ran out of space classic me but anyways so yeah um what was i saying oh yeah if you enjoyed this video as usual you can like it make sure you're subscribed to the study tube project and if you want to check out my channel as well um I'll put the link in the description box as well. But, you know, let's just talk about viruses. What are viruses? Let's start with the definition. So viruses are, first of all, non-living, which is crazy to think that something not living can do so much to the world. And they're what we call obligate intracellular parasites. Now, this is quite a mouthful, but it actually makes a lot of sense when you break it down. So the first part of it, obligate intracellular, means that they have to be inside a cell in order to replicate. Hence, they are obligately intracellular. Intracellular means inside a cell and obligate means they have to be inside the cell. And then a parasite, just thinking more broadly, is something that exploits another organism or cell and benefits whilst that organism or cell that is being exploited doesn't benefit. And so a virus basically needs a host cell to replicate. So it's inside this host cell and replicating. It's benefiting from doing so because it's able to replicate itself, but that host cell is not benefiting from it. It's normally being harmed or damaged in some way. Okay, so number two, in terms of the structure of a virus, at their very simplest, they are just a piece of genetic information surrounded by a protein coat. And that protein coat is called the capsid. And we normally call this whole viral particle a virion. Okay, so continuing on the theme of viral structure, for number three, sometimes a virus might have what we call an envelope surrounding their capsid, and that is derived from the host cell. It's part of the host cell's membrane, essentially, that the virus has taken with it or acquired when it exits the cell at the end of its life cycle, when it kind of buds out we say but not all viruses do that and so not every virus will have this envelope number four looking at the genetic material so i said that the simplest virus is just genetic material surrounded by a protein coat called the capsid and that genetic material specifically it can be either dna or rna we can also break down dna and rna viruses into like double stranded dna viruses single stranded dna viruses and the same with rna we also have special types of rna viruses called retroviruses viruses are hugely diverse basically and then we have what's called the baltimore classification system and that categorizes or classifies a virus according to its replication cycle the way in which it replicates inside the host cell that's our baltimore classification system and that largely depends on the type of viral genome number five is about the viral life cycle so how does it replicate inside that host cell and we can divide this into three phases. I was gonna hold up four fingers, three phases. The first is what we say adsorption and penetration. So the virus kind of binds to this host cell and then it enters that host cell. It depends on the virus, but most importantly, they need to get their DNA or RNA into that host cell. Then we have the next phase, which is called the eclipse phase. And this is when we see kind of no completely whole viruses because they're essentially replicating themselves and as i said that depends on the type of genetic information that they have and then we have this third and final stage which we can say is all to do with assembling your viral particles your new virions and then the release of those viral particles sometimes the host cell might burst and all the virions the new viral particles will be released or as I said before, they might bud out of that host cell and take a bit of the host cell membrane with it so that they get an envelope. Okay, so for number six, we're gonna think at a more organismal level on kind of a bigger, larger scale. We're not just talking about a single host cell now, we're talking about a whole organism, say like a human. And viruses normally enter and leave, say our body, via specific portals of entry and exit is what we call them. And they can be anything and everything basically, like the respiratory tract, for example, or the digestive system, there are so many. Sometimes a virus will enter and leave via the same 
portal. However, sometimes they might be different. A virus might use multiple portals of entry and exit. It's very variable, we could say. But most importantly, all viruses will be very adapted to the way in which they enter a body and leave the body, which makes sense. If a virus needs to get through, you know, the stomach acid, it's going to have to resist that, for example. Okay, I think we're on number seven. I don't know how I've lost count already, but anyway. Number seven. This is about our immune system, the immune response against viruses. Not my first video on the study tube project channel, but my first biology video, which was my last one. I can link that one down below. I talked about white blood cells and the immune system, kind of gave you an introduction. And so the immune system we know is hugely complex and there are many immune mechanisms that will help to defend against viruses when we encounter a virus as a pathogen. But in terms of the innate or non-specific response, we have NK cells, which are so important when we have a viral infection. And then we also have a specific type of cytokine or chemical signaling molecule called interferon or interferon. I never really know how to pronounce words in general, let alone biology words. But anyway, we have interferon, interferon, and it's really important against viral infections. And then part of the adaptive immune response, so the specific immune response, we have killer T cells, which are really important, as well as antibodies from our plasma cells. Obviously, as I said, there are loads of other things going on but those are just some key immune mechanisms number eight so thinking of the outcome of a virus infection sometimes it might be acute and really kind of short lasting others might be what we call chronic just ongoing infections however some can be what we call latent so latent infections are actually really really quite deadly because the virus essentially becomes kind of dormant inside this host cell and it's not replicating itself and it's not producing any new viral particles and so our immune system doesn't think we're infected it can't see any new viral particles to attack by the same token if we try and use any antiviral drugs against the virus it won't be effective because the virus is essentially sleeping we could say or quiescent is a more technical term and so we might see a blip at the start where we have symptoms and then we have an ongoing latent infection we don't really know we've got a virus still inside us and then there might be another surge later on the hiv for example those two surges can be like years apart i'm talking like 10 years for example people can be latently infected with hiv and in contrast to the latent ones in a chronic infection the virus is normally continuously being shed and that is therefore in direct contrast to a latent infection. Also in terms of like outcomes of infection, we know that up to 20% of human cancers are caused by viruses. One that most people will have heard of is HPV, human papillomavirus. There are certain types of HPV that cause cervical cancer most notably. It does cause other forms of cancer, but we know that there is a direct link between certain types of HPV infection and cervical cancer in women, hence why we have the vaccine. Okay, number nine, let's talk about the treatment of viral infection. So say you've been infected with a virus, how do we treat it? In terms of the drugs we use, we cannot use antibiotics. They are only effective against bacterial infections. Viruses, we can use what we call antiviral drugs and they basically target the virus specifically, but it's really hard for us to develop these drugs because as I said, a virus replicates inside a host cell. So we need to find a specific drug target that is not going to affect the host cell. We want to try and leave our host cell alone so as to not cause any unwanted side effects, but specifically target this virus. And finally, the last thing I will leave you with, the number 10 of these 10 quick fire snippets of information we could say is all about vaccines. I believe there's been a recent video, a guest submission, all about vaccines and how they work. So I can actually leave that one down below because it links to what I'm saying here. But vaccines are so, so important when it comes to viral infections. As I said, antiviral drugs, they're very hard to develop. By contrast, vaccines are so important in terms of prevention of viral infections and vaccines allow us to achieve like herd immunity. It's trying to ensure that the majority of the population is immune and basically try and like prevent the spread of this virus. And then in doing so, we're gonna basically make sure people aren't getting infected. And sometimes it's possible with vaccines to completely eliminate the virus entirely. The only virus that we have been able to completely eradicate is smallpox. We are close to doing that with polio, but it's not completely been eradicated yet, but it is really hard to eradicate a virus. It's only been done once. And I think that speaks for itself. So yeah, I think that's everything. I hope you learned something new as always with these videos. And you now feel a bit more, as I said at the start, clued up with viruses. They're like incredibly powerful. It honestly blows my mind sometimes to think that 
something that's not even living can put the whole entire world into lockdown. That's my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. As I said at the start, like if you did. Leave your comments down below and subscribe. All that jazz. I will speak to you again in the future on the study tube project channel and yeah i hope you are all safe and well i should probably end this video by saying but yeah i'm gonna go now otherwise i will literally start to a fall so yeah bye i just don't know how to end these videos bye i'm moving away